Hello guys, welcome back to my crash course in watercolors. Today we're gonna paint a crane. I did my sketch, my line sketch, maybe with too many lines. And I did a field sketch of, whoops, of the beak. So this will be my beak. I wanted to make sure that I had those colors down in the mix before I started painting for you. And we're gonna start with some color, a little bit of color, a little bit of paint gray on on the body and be very very gentle this is probably paint enough for the whole bird because they are white so we want this to be as light as possible and I want to alternate wet parts with dry brush work. And go very gently. Also in the neck. And I'm just going to give a quick wash here on it. I'm going to change to a smaller round brush. And I'm just going to add a little effect on the edges of the feathers just a tiny tiny bit of effect we don't want to um, go too dark unless of course I am doing a gray crane that is a very light uh, almost silvery kind of color And adding a little bit of dimension. Even if you don't really know how um, those feathers are folding, you can try. And we are starting getting a little bit of shape. Again, just be mindful that you don't want to be too dark. And you want to construct uh, this part that you can see white. I use the dry brush. I am thinking if I want to keep it or not. Maybe I want to leave it. But anyway, there is the fold. We are looking at the back. So you have the fold of the two sides. And right here in the middle, you have where the feathers, or where the wings close and the feathers overlap. So I think I'm gonna leave it lighter but I put the water on to break a little of the dry brush effect. I thought it was too much. And just making sure. Okay. 
watercolor is the art of putting paint and lifting paint. You can never be completely happy just doing one step. You always require two steps. And I'm going to do a little folding right here. There you are. No water. And I can identify more or less what kind of bird this is just by the feathers that we just suggested. We, we are not painting feathers, we are just suggesting. Make sure soften these edges down here. Um, for the legs, we can add more or less the same mixture with a tiny bit of um, orange. The description of the colors are in the video description. And um, we are just indicating the this needs to be a straight line. Here comes the leg, the feet. And it's going to need a tiny bit of violet, tile of violet that I'm just dropping right on it, right where I just put the, the orange wash. Now we're going to have some details on the beak and the eyes. So this is a zero round brush and uh, that's when we have to be careful painting a bird because the beak defines the bird. You can make a complete mess, but the beak needs to be uh, nice and precise. Even if you're not a painting, a realistic painting, see this is a very strong uh, orange. And I'm gonna use a mixture of this orange with a tallow blue, tallow, uh, tallow cobalt, cobalt blue to paint very gently. Uh, this big cranes have very straight beaks. I have to confess that my favorite bird is a seagull, so I paint a way more seagulls than any other bird. But I do have several paintings on cranes, just because they are very popular um, where I live. And I'm lifting a little bit. I want to be a little more orangish. And now I leave it. This um, color from my sketch is a mixture of um, orange with um, blue. It gives me this uh, violet um, feel that's not overpowering. And that's what I will be doing. 
So I'm just going to mix a little bit of uh, orange and blue here. And I am going to leave the space. I'm leaving a lot of space for the eye. The eye is actually very, very small, but I'm going to leave it. And I have that mark here. And suddenly got very wet. Uh, this is uh, pure blue. And the same blue I just applied. I'm going to drop a little bit on the peak. The peak is quite not gray. And we can always add an afterthought orange. And I thought about doing this video in one sitting. Let's see if it's possible. And while this is drying, I didn't touch the eye yet. I am going to put some color on the background. So, since I'm painting more or less of imagination, I am going to plan a white, a light value um, background for the head because the head is darker and a darker background here near the body that's basically white so if I want to do some combinations of uh, blue I can I have two options one I can just have it uh, wet Maybe that's a good idea. Oh, what is this? Is a piece of something. So I just using a little tint in the water so you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes it's difficult just to show you painting pure water on white paper. I'm just so uh, and I'm going to stop here and I'm gonna dump some blues that's the time when you define your season is this winter is this is spring um, where is this bird and you can do a, a tell a story with the background when you add if you add a, a light um, cerulean blue like now you make a nice uh, spring summerish kind of day And you can add a little bit of cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is um, cold. You don't want it to become too serious. And I want a very, very diluted near the head. Maybe it's a cloud. 
can always uh, invent something. And right here, before it dries, I come back with some water and I make sure that I don't have this hard line here. This is happening because I, during my drawing, I erased the neck once. And when you erase, even gently, uh, you always hurt the paper. When, when you see, actually, you don't, uh, you're not gonna feel too much when it dries. But right now, when it's wet, you feel it a lot. And I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, vegetation here. I'm just dropping some greens. It's okay if I put on the leg. And oh, I forgot this area here. Make sure that you cover your white spaces that you don't want. And we can maybe add some effects to this grass. If you want, I mean, this is whatever grass you feel like doing in your swamp. This type of uh, this type of um, texture you can't uh, remove later on. So before you get too enthusiastic, make sure that it is what you want, and you can always add a few pieces of uh, salt around to create some drama. I'm using. Um, this as extra course any any kind of extra course will do it nicely and you can add some more pigment or maybe another color that um very a uh, very close in like this gray-yellow. You can now uh, splash and leave it. Splash and leave it. And uh, now we need to work on the eye because the head is already drier. It's drying. So, the eye has one circle black, one orangish with yellowish, is a mixture, and a central spot black. So how am I going to do this in such a small piece? Well, with patience, the same way we did everything else. I'm gonna start with the dot in the middle and I'm gonna do a tiny, tiny, tiny circle around the eye. And I'm gonna leave it. And I'm gonna create now some drama under the neck. This area in the bird is white. So I'm gonna try to show this with the background. Since I'm so close from the, the bird, the body of the bird, I have to use a very tiny, tiny, tiny brush. And I do the same thing on the other side. Remember, it's the sky. The sky cannot change violently from one side to the other. If a color go around a shape, you always need to come back and be careful not to drop, 
to what I just did. That is to put too much color too close. Then you come back with pure water and you start far away and then you come closer and you give escape to the pigment. And again, start far away and come closer. Notice that the, the paper here is still very wet and when it's very wet and you put more moisture, it's going to bloom. So you have to work quickly and make sure that you are removing everything you need very quickly. But the pigment stayed, so it's okay. This line is very strong and we can lift when we finish. Now I can safely put the orange. Uh, I take the excess of the paint. I really don't want a, a lot of paint now. And I drop a little bit of this orange and I'm going to do the same thing for the yellow. I take the excess from the brush and I just drop it there and it's okay if I need to do it again. And it's also okay if I need to go back and put a little more black on the center, which I can only do when it's dry. Otherwise, you're going to lose both. And I can start working towards the, the head in the sense that I can darken it. Uh, I want dark and soft at the same time. And I want to be very gentle because I just paint the eye. And let's see what else do I need to do right now while it's gonna dry. I am putting more dry, sorry, more <laughs> water, uh, clean water on this fake background. And I'm gonna let this dry completely uh, until we come back to finish, we are very close to be done. Okay, I came back a little earlier than I wanted because I am having those blooms and I don't necessarily want them here. So I decided to continue recording. I'm gonna use my little tool again that unfortunately I haven't um, learned the name yet, but I bought at um, a nail house, uh, actually a beauty store is uh, for you to do your nails. And what I wanna do here is, um, is indentations, but these indentations are a little different from those ones. And I wanna help me to this guys a little bit. See, it's still very wet. And I can put the, the salt back where they were. And 
and I can invent uh, something abstract here. I just didn't want it to go too far away from me. And for this eye, I'm gonna put a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black right in the middle. And a tiny bit here. I know sometimes birds have uh, strange eyes. And I'm gonna use this black to go right here and define this beak and the nostrils. Oops, my salt is coming out. Gently put the salt back more or less where you want. The salt reacts with the pigment of the watercolor and move it away from the grain where it was sitting. Here is dry already. And to finish up, I'm still putting water here, so it's still gonna bloom. We can think a little bit about uh, creating some drama on this sky. I can do two things that I was uh, thinking about if I find my brush. Number six again. If I put the light coming from this side, I can leave this part of the sky lighter and I can make a little bit of shadows on this side. Uh, it will help with the drawing that I did and that I erased and it hurt the paper more than I suspected. So I'm going to go back to my pens, um, uh, pen is gray. I think that's what I used before. And I'm very I'm gonna go very gently uh, over this side of the neck. And immediately I come back to remove a bit. Notice I did not use water. I just put the pigment over the neck and I took it off as quickly as possible. See, you go and you come back and start scooping very, very gently, very lightly. I am scooping some shadows. in the body of my crane. And unless my eyes are pulling tricks on me, it looks to me a little bluer than the hue that I had before. But that's okay, it works. The human eye always expect to see shadows in blue. You can really confuse the audience if you change this and start doing reverse hot areas with um, hot areas are usually a yellowish red 
warm colors. So we could try to do a video inverting uh, inverting the, the palette and see if we would feel very uncomfortable. Tiny bit more. Let's not go overboard. Easier said than done. Okay. The, fold, the folding is always difficult. You just need to indicate as best as possible that something is happening there. Don't let uh, this to go too far. If you need lift a bit here, there better. And we do need some work on the sky to look a little nicer. Let's see what we can do here with this sky. Maybe we want to add some clouds here. And they need to be a little purplish, white purple, um, to balance a little bit what we have. And since I'm going to make clouds, I'm going to put some clear water. You can make, a, you can make clouds with a dry brush too, but right now I Not feeling it. It's just pure water, but it is not, I'm not soaking the paper anymore. And I'm gonna use a bit of Penny's gray and violet, and let's see what happens here. So, uh, I want some clouds. The darkest part of the cloud are usually the bottom, if you're doing during the day. So, go around the neck. Go around the neck and go so I'm just dropping some, some of, don't forget to go around the neck. And be careful not to divide your painting. You don't want your painting to be divided. 
in stripes <laughs> because of your clouds. And I push these clouds here, leave this white space, leave the bottom of the clouds. Let's do this corner darker. And make sure you don't leave hard lines. Don't leave hard lines near the beak. And what we need now is some cobalt blue. And come down here, making clouds. I should take another brush. Let's see. Number 12. And... The decision is, do I want soft clouds or hard edge clouds? If you watched my video for painting a seagull, uh, you saw that I alternate clouds with um, soft edges and clouds with hard edges. See, I'm leaving some hard edges with dry brush and I want to soften this as much as possible in here. Remember what I said about the beak? I, I want the beak and the head to show. So I'm going to make this um, go this direction. Again, careful not to divide your painting in segments. Push this cloud that, that little down and we're going to break We're gonna break this blue down here. I don't know, I'm just inventing. Again, if uh, we don't like the result, we can always paint again. It's true, sometimes I will not paint again, but you can at home. I actually painted a very, very long video was like almost three hours and I couldn't upload and I lost the video and I'm not gonna paint those flowers again. I'm just adding color. Very gently near there neck and I'm going to cross to the other side going very gently make sure that they have the same value both sides of the neck I don't like this hard line here, so I'm going to come back and dissolve it. My salt is drying. I want some blue down here, same cobalt blue. And 
And you may be thinking, what is she doing? I don't know. I actually don't know. But sometimes you need to just improvise and see if you like it. And make adjustments, move the paint around a bit. Ah! Uh, Add a little bit of violet or rose down here. I think it's good. Yeah, see, I like that. With time, you learn your favorite combinations and things that you can use in several paintings. And at my age, I don't really have any secrets anymore. Otherwise, I'm gonna die and take everything that I know with me to the grave. It's not fair to the next generations. Okay, let's see what's going on here. I want this part not to bleed. Too much and I still have to fix this line here that is bothering me a little pinkish around I'm just dropping some violet Uh, and I'm gonna go back to the gray and uh, see if okay the paper is too dry to add soft paint now there is this moment when the paper is not dry completely through but the surface is drying so if I add any paint I will cause a major tragedy like a major bleeding, major blooming, I think it's better than bleeding. And um, and when this happens, you need to wait. This brush is dry and I'm just uh, moving the pigment. I can also use another technique uh, if a flat brush is completely dry and I'm just going to go very quickly over it. I'm not really moving anything. But gives a blending soft effect to the paper that we can see later. So again, uh, we let this dry. I don't like this here. Uh, sometimes, that's the problem with sometimes with blues is fixing problems is uh, quite difficult. Let's see if we can do this better. And of course, if you see uh, something like this uh, capillarity here, you have to come very quickly with your cotton tip and prevent the blues from going anywhere near what you separate as white. It's a game. And I think I know how I'm going to fix this. Let's see if I can do it now or later. Why is important to try to fix a problem? 
it's just because you learn and uh, everybody has problems. If you follow a particular artist uh, on social media or here in YouTube, he, he, sometimes they address directly some problems that they had to fix. And uh, trust me, even if they don't uh, explicitly say that they fix this or that, you can see that they are working a little more diligently in a certain area that doesn't make much sense. But then you understand when you're trying to paint yourself and you see, oh, this doesn't look good. I need to fix it. So let this dry now. And we come back to sign and to take off the salt. Hello, guys. And this is our final version. I remove it completely the salt. Um, I add a, a few stems of grass and the only thing very different that I did uh, to finish this painting was to add wax. Um, you probably know that many artists are framing they are watercolors without glass and you can spray fix that is a, a technique that i use especially if i'm shipping my painting abroad to avoid any potential accidents with water during the shipment and I heard a um, very interesting lecture um, that the artist was showing this product. Uh, I'm testing, so far so good, is supposed to be waterproof. So you, whatever you um, try, um, try things that will dry and be waterproof if you want to display your watercolor without glass. Just remember that when you seal, um, you're not going to be able to do any little corrections or anything like that. And I usually do corrections even when my paintings are already framed. Okay, so. I see you guys soon. Thank you for watching.